Hi there, I'm Andrew Bunnell, and today let's take a quick look at collisions. In our experiment today, we're going to use some of the equipment we've had in the past. We have two different position sensors. Remember, they have an uncertainty or a position of about five or six microns. Uh, we got a blue cart and a red cart. You need to weigh them on the scale on the front. Also, we're going to need to level the playing track with some cards. This time, we're going to um, hold the blue cart just ever so lightly. And then we're going to toss the red cart toward the other end, just lightly, very slowly. It's going to bounce off, come back. It's going to enter the sensor to which it will start to take the data. And then it will, uh, you're going to remove your hand right before it hits the blue cart. You're going to first do it with the spring bumpers. And then you're going to flip them around and do the Velcro bumpers. The Velcro bumpers in particular need to go very slow for them to stick and to stay attached. Okay, so I've just taken a couple sets of data. And we're going to do this one a little bit quick today. So I have Origin open, and then I'm just going to go ahead and drag my first file into Origin. And you can either do that, or you can use this 1, 2, 3 import, or you can do data, connect, and all that kind of stuff. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit Finish, and it's going to figure things out for me, and there I go. I have some data. Now, just a quick note. If you have a little data connector up here, you're going to want to right-click that or left-click that and say, Remove Connection, Remove Data Connection, so that you can still just, or you can just have a copy of the data. Now, the next thing you need to do is you need to find the velocities because of we have position, but we're looking at energies today. And so these are positions in meters. And don't forget to put red cart and blue cart. And, uh, and how are we going to find our, um, how are we going to find our um, velocities? Well, we're just going to use the differentiate function like we have in the past. So mathematics, differentiate, open dialog. We want a first order. Let's set it to auto this time. Now, I've told you last time to delete the first and last cells, but the first and last cells aren't important for this, um, this calculation or these uh, data processing today. So right there, I just took the, so this is going to be V1, and this is in meters per second, and this is going to be red. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the blue. <clears throat> so analysis, mathematics, differentiate. This time I'm going to just do last used. Boom, there it is. Now this is V2, and this is also in meters per second. And this is going to be the blue cart. Now I need to find the uncertainty of V1 and V2. So error in velocity. Now we can assume that the sensors read pretty close to the same. And so, um, so right here I'm going to get a good approximation of my uncertainty by um, plotting one of these two velocities versus time. I'm going to plot that one. I'm going to hit a scatter plot. I'm going to go ahead and double click my data, make it a little bit smaller. And before the collision happens, we expect the velocity of the cart to be pretty close to the same. I see ever so slightest bit of slope to it, but um, I'm going to assume that that's small enough to ignore. We'll see it in my later data, but um, I'm going to use the pool tool over there, oh, data select tool, uh, selection on active plot. And then I'm going to do the column statistics button. And I'm just looking for the standard deviation here. And I know it's checked right there, but just to double check, there it is. So let's go ahead and hit OK. Let's go to the report. And I see that my standard deviation is 7e to the negative 4. So I'm going to go back to tab 1. And I'm going to put in that as my uncertainty, 7e to the negative 4. And just as a reminder, uh, Origin can read calculator notation. It can't read standard notation. So you can't use a, the letter x, and you can't do the caret to the 10, or, or whatever the case may be. So this is our uncertainty for our velocities. Now we're going to need six more columns, two, three, four, five, six. And these six columns is going to be um, the kinetic energy of the first one, and then the error of the kinetic energy. And it's going to be the kinetic energy of the second one. And it's going to be the total energy and the error in the total energy. And the units for these are all joules. Control C. Now, what is, the what is the formula for kinetic energy? It's 1 half mv squared. So what is the mass of the red cart? Well, the mass of the red cart should be about 0 0.340. Now, I had actually for my cart 0 0.342, and that's kilograms. Don't forget that the scale reads in grams and that the carts need to be in standard units, so kilograms. And I'm also going to put in my blue right now. Now, my blue cart weighed um, 0.482. And your cart might be, weigh just a little bit more, a little bit less than mine. Make sure you weigh it in the beginning or in the front of the scale or in the front of the classroom. Okay, so now our formula is going to be 1 half times mass, and this is going to be 0 0.342. 
and then times velocity squared. Now my velocity is column in column D. Don't forget the squared. Oops, I, and I forgot the times. Okay, there we go. Now the uncertainty in the velocity is, or in the um, kinetic energy is just given in the discussion. If you want to learn how to calculate it, you can go to appendix B. So I'm going to do that times column D times column F. Now my D is my velocity for my uh, first cart, and my F is my um, uncertainty of the velocity. And I'm going to do the same thing quick with the blue. So that's 1 half times 0.482, but use your own data, times it by, this is going to be column E quantity, or E squared. And then my uncertainty is going to be 0.482, times it by um, E, times it by F. And there we go. Now our total energy is simply going to be G plus I. Oops. G plus, oops, plus I, and then, okay, there we go. Now we got it the right way. And then our um, total energy is, or the error is going to be this, this one squared plus this one squared. So that's going to be square root H plus uh, H plus J quantity squared. Okay, there we go. Now we got to change all these three right here to error bars and mine's not showing up right at the second so I'm going to drag it out a little bit more and click on this error bar. But as a reminder you can also just select it that way or you could right click and select it, that kind of stuff. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and highlight all those and I'm going to go ahead and hit the three dots down here and there I go. Now I'm going to double click the dots and I'm going to make the symbol smaller size 3 apply okay and notice the it's a little bit weird it set the colors different than I'd expect them and so I'm gonna double click on my data again I'm gonna drag this out just a little bit and notice how this one is for the kinetic energy the first one which should have been red so I'm gonna go back to group and do independent this time and then I'm gonna go to symbol and I'm gonna hit this color right down here and choose red there we go now I'm going to go to the next one, and that one's supposed to be blue, so let's drop down and click on blue, and then go to the last one down here. And then I'm going to ch choose black. Uh, you know what? Let's be funny. So black, blue, and red mixed together, I'm going to make purple. So, uh-oh, there's purpling going on. If you get that, uh, go ahead and laugh. Um, okay, so now we got uh, our data, and we need to really zoom in on the first little section of our data, where the first collision took place. And then I also recommend students to have this where where the cart leaves the first sensor if it's shown in your graph. Now what we're most concerned about is if the data here and the data here are approximately the same. Now to do that we're going to select um, our data tool just like that and we're going to select a chunk of data right there. Notice that right here and right there there's like a little bit of acceleration and so I'm just choosing a big chunk average. I could have I guess chosen the whole thing and seen uh, seeing if that's the same. And I'm just going to do statistics on column again. And I'm going to go ahead and hit auto. Now this time for computational control, you can actually change it to instrumental. Uh, and we'll see if the instructions will say that soon. It probably won't. <laughs> but uh, because if we actually have error bars that we think are correct. And then for quantities, we can uncheck everything, but we need the average standard deviation and the standard error. And we can come down to the quantity quantiles and uncheck all those as well. Go back to here and go ahead and hit OK. Now I'm going to go look at the report and I have two numbers that are pretty close. They're 0 0.00004 but notice my uncertainties are 0, 0, 0, um, a couple more zeros to the 6. So I'm going to do a quick z-score here and I don't think I'm going to get a great answer. And part of the reason for that is my track wasn't perfectly level. Or maybe the sensor tape just dragged ever so slightly. So I'm going to do that equals ABS parentheses. And it's B1 minus B2. B1 minus B2 parentheses divided by the square root of the standard errors, not the standard deviations. So that's going to be D1, D1, oh, uh, D1 quantity squared plus D2 quantity squared. And I got a z-score of 3. Um, my track wasn't perfectly level. 
Now for um, <clears throat> the second part of the experiment, you're going to make a copy of this worksheet, but to make it a little bit easier to read, I'm going to rename this one and just call elastic for elastic collision. Now I'm going to make a copy of this worksheet, duplicate, and I'm going to rename this worksheet, rename, to call it uh, inelastic. Now, uh, when you drag in your next set of data, it's not going to, it's going to create a new tab. It's not going to directly cover over the previous data. And so notice how I have new data up here, and I'm just going to copy this data, control C, and plop it right back down on this worksheet that I just copied. And everything should have calculated through, and I get a new total energy. And I can highlight all those again and um, highlight this one right here, click the dots, and we definitely see that there was some energy lost. Did I select the right graph? Oops, I pulled in the wrong data. I pulled in my second set of elastic data. But let me just go ahead and show you that really quick. So my second set is I had the sensor tape just ever so you know, it was dragging just ever so slightly. And so even though I leveled my track better, so it's much flatter, this time it, it lost a little bit from dragging on the sensor tape. So that wasn't actually good data. But guess what? We can just drag in a second set uh, or another set of data. And so I'm going to just drag in this set of data, which is my inelastic data, and check that out really quick. So I'm going to highlight those three, Control-C, and go to my... Um, same inelastic one that has all the formulas, paste that, and now my graph three should have fixed and I can go right click, rescale to show all, and notice what happened here. I have a significant loss in energy. And um, I'm gonna double click on the data, I'm gonna make the symbol smaller, size three, apply. I'm gonna go ahead and change the color by first of all going to independent symbol, and changing the first one to red, changing the second one to blue, and then changing the third one to black. Apply, okay. And now you're going to do the same thing as before. So you're going to do a little data pool, and I'm going to select this data right there, and select this data right here. And notice how cool this is. Those two carts are kind of bouncing back and forth, but look, it's relatively a flat line. That is so cool. Now analysis, oh, I need just a statistics button. And on this one, we definitely see that, uh, change it to instrumental, we definitely see that we have energy loss. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and hit OK this time. I just checked standard error. And we're going to quantify how much energy loss there was. And so I'm just going to go to the next tab, and I'm going to add in some tabs, one, two, three, and I'm going to say the energy loss. And that's going to be in joules. And this time, we just do a subtraction. So we're going to do B1 minus B2 equals B1 minus B2. Now, what is our uncertainty for that? This time, um, so the error in the loss, we have to do, we're subtracting two values, so we've got to take the square root equals SQRT of the sum of the squares, and so that's in column D. So that's D quantity squared plus D2 quantity squared, and I have to put in that D1 right there, D1. There we go. And so there's our uncertainty. Now you're going to have to round these digits correctly and all that kind of stuff. But anyways, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.